Rebel Buddha here, and welcome back to the show. We got James Martin today, pro skateboarder. He 180 to switch Smith grind or barley grind at Hollywood 16. I would say that's his probably gnarliest claim to fame trick. Welcome to the show. Thanks, dude. Thanks for having me. Yeah, dude. What's going on? Chilling. Didn't you just had a kid? Yeah. What? Tell me all about it. Dude. Little uh, little baby boy. What's his name? Caden. Caden. How'd you come up with the name? Uh, me and my girlfriend were kind of like going back and forth like with names and we just like couldn't find like a cool name that like kind of stood out and like we we kind of like thought about like you know like oh you know Hayden is kind of cool but like how would it be with like a K and then we were like oh let's do like K-A-I-D-E-N that'd be sick Kaden okay. you know kind of like Kai you know Kai is like, ocean in, yeah. in Hawaiian right mm-hmm. kind of like Kai but like Kaden Okay. But I don't know, like, get, you know, people could call him Kai for short because it's K-A-I. Or Kai, no, it's not Kaiden. No. Kaiden. Cool, yeah. yeah, it could be just K- Kai. Yeah. I know some people named Kai, it's a good, mm-hmm. good Hawaiian-rooted name. Yeah, but we just thought of something different, something cool. Nice, I like it. Yeah, I, I, get, I gave him the nickname, a little, I actually call him Kaiden sometimes. She, she hates it when I call him that. <laughs> it's been like, oh, five days. Three weeks. Oh, it's been three weeks. Three weeks. So yeah. what is that? What is that like? Like, cause I'm single. I'm not married or anything. It's pretty. It's intense. It's rad though. It's like the best feeling I've ever had. And you were there, and you saw just like come I, out. I watched every every bit of second, it, every second of it. And you were like crying, and your heart. Yeah, like, I was crying. I was so emotional. And your heart was open, like yeah. wide. Yeah. Like as if you were like the highest you've ever been in your life. For sure. Like the feeling of like. Watching him come out and like snipping his umbilical his umbil- umbilical cord and holding him, like was unreal, dude. The adrenaline rush was crazy. I can't explain it. It's nuts. And everyone was healthy and happy and yeah. Every he passed all his like tests and stuff. They said he was super healthy. I mean, like me and my chick don't smoke or drink, so okay. Yeah. So you're sober. We're both sober, yeah. And you've been sober for years. A long time, yeah. Because it seems like everyone in skateboarding like smokes weed and drinks and stuff or does drugs. Nah, I mean I used to when I was younger, but I I just don't like the way it like like makes me feel. I'd rather just be like. Straight, straight mind focused. So what happened? Was there was there a time in your life when you were like partying and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Until how old were you when you were being like that? Probably about like nineteen, because when I was seventeen, I got in a lot of trouble for drugs. Not drugs, but I just gotten I got into a fight and I was like stealing a lot and drinking and smoking. That's and so young to be just being, acting like that. Yeah, just being a punk. Okay, <laughs> just being a, a regular skater kid. Uh huh. And and that was mostly in Camarillo. Uh, I was in, it was well. I got in trouble in Thousand Oaks, but yeah, it was it was like mainly Camarillo, Thousand Oaks, Newberry Park. That's where you grew up mostly. Yeah, well, I I grew up in Ventura, and then I moved to Camarillo, and then it was like yeah. And when you were like a twelve or something. And I lived in Ventura until I was about eight, and then I moved to Camarillo when I like was about to turn nine, and then I've just lived there ever since. And you skated Cam Park like every single day. Yeah, and that's where I saw you. That was the first time I probably met you. Yeah. You were doing like super crazy back tails in the bowl and like going really fast. And I was like, dude, who the fuck is this dude? And everyone was like, oh, this dude's sponsored by Stereo. And I'm like, what the fuck? It was wow. rad. Thanks, man. That's yeah. probably like when I was 19 years old. Yeah. That's like in 2006 and, and, and seven. Yeah. And it's funny because I went home that same day and watched your like field report. And oh, I was like, fuck, this dude rips. Thanks, man. That's, Gnarly. I can't believe they even. Because this is all before social media, too. Mm-hmm. So it's a different time. Like, mm-hmm. to get a video back then with, with your own part, you know how hard that was? It was hard. It was so hard. It's not like today where you can just, like, blast everything online and just have fucking instant gratification. How does that feel? Like, to being a, skate- a pro skateboarder now, like, you used to have to work for your part for, like, a year. You put out that part, Where Are We Going? That You probably worked on that for two years or something. Yeah. And then, and now, you put out a part every six months something like that i haven't put out a part for a little while i have one that i'm like working on right now but it's just been hard because i've been working like full time and then like taking care of the family and like doing new dad yeah new dad new dad and a full-time job yeah so you work 40 hours a week at Mm -hmm. joe's yeah and you're the what do you do there uh like everything you're gonna become the manager or anything i don't know maybe (laughs) maybe further down the line that'd be cool i mean that's that would really help out your family yeah and is it more work Mm, no, it's like different responsibilities. Okay. A little bit more work, but no, kind of the same thing. We're kind of we kind of all do the same thing. It's all the same tactic. 
But you have the confidence and the skills yeah, to do I, that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think that would be great. Yeah. So how did you even... So you found skateboarding. How old were you? Uh, when I first started skating, I was nine. And how did you find it? Uh, my grandpa bought me like this like shitty Walmart like skateboard that had like a Viper on it, and I thought it was the coolest fucking thing. And you ever. got to pick it out? No, I just he just came over one one evening for Christmas Eve and just handed it to me. And it was the like, straight Christmas story. Yeah, and I was just like, "Fuck, this thing's sick," you know. Like, and I took it outside, and I would just sit down on my butt and go down my neighbor's driveways and stuff, and that's how it all started. By yourself? Mm-hmm. And and then how did you meet friends or like find a crew mm, or get I a met, board? Yeah, I met a couple kids in my neighborhood that kind of liked to do it too, but they weren't as like into it as I was. I was like really into it. I really wanted to learn how to ollie and one eighty and kickflip and all that stuff. Started watching like. Uh, a lot of skate videos. My first video was like Toy Machine. Welcome to Hell. Okay. Great I saw first that. Video. Yeah, and I saw yeah. that and I was like, fuck, that's what people do. So then that's why you skate big rails? Maybe, I don't know. I just I don't know. I just like skating rails. So how let's talk about rails because that's like your specialty and you've grinded rails that are like over twenty stairs. Right? Mm-hmm. Like what you grinded like a twenty five stair handrail or something? The biggest one that I grinded was in like Camarillo. It's in Camarillo Springs, and it's like a it's kind of like a weird setup. It, it has like a curb in front of it, and then a sidewalk, and then it drops down another curb, and then sidewalk, and then there's the rail. Okay. But I built like a little platform for it to make the runway flush, and we put a sign up the curb, and it's like a thirty-seven stair rail. Thirty-seven stair rail. <laughs> yeah. So, is there a record? Like, did you know if like the biggest rail grinded? I think I think someone grinded bigger. Like Steve Nesser, I think like, grinded really? like. 50 something i think that ad was like 50 something it was like an old birdhouse like thrash it was like it was a thrasher cover but it was in the birdhouse video okay i'm gonna have to look that up yeah Did steve nesser i think still has the, the biggest the record yeah more than like probably the stairs but not length of a rail yeah i'd say it was like more of a lengthy like mellow rail than like a super like little steep. stairs kind of thing yeah maybe i don't know it looks huge it looked crazy. So what what's going through your mind? You're like, I'm gonna grind this thing. Like, what? How do you prepare for something like a big stunt? Mm, I don't know. I just kind of one day I wake up and I feel good, and I'm like, all right, let's just go fucking try to do it. But you've seen the rail; it's been there for. Forever. Yeah, I kind of like have a process where I'll like go look at it like multiple times and like kind of like examine everything by yourself. You're like, by, just yeah. drive by, like okay. Or my girlfriend will come with me. Okay. She thinks I'm crazy. All right. Yeah. And you just look at it for a while and jump on it with your feet or anything, or? Mm, I like to ollie over it first, even if it's like, even if it's like kind of fucked, like the way you have to ollie over it. I like to ollie over even it Even into stairs? Yeah. Like, well, no, not into stairs. There has to be like dirt on the side. Okay. But, um, yeah, I usually like to ollie over it first or like tap a 50-50 and like try to run out. But it's hard to do that on some types of the rails. Yeah, like, like if it's really steep? Yeah, you can't do that. And then, because you grinded like some serious steep... Stuff. I was just like watching your stuff before you came over. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> like even, because I went to Oak Park High and there was that rail you grinded, you smith grinded that as a 14 that oh, goes yeah. up the track. Uh-huh. And I looked at that thing every day when I had to go to PE mm-hmm. when I was a teenager and I, that wasn't a spot. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? That wasn't yeah. a spot to me. Dude, we, we, uh, actually it's funny because like, dude, Kenji took us there. Okay. Yeah. And, um, we, uh, we looked at it, and one day I just was, like, fucking looking at it, and I was like, dude, this rail's skatable. Like, it's, someone could hit this thing. I mean, I wasn't, I don't think I was good enough back at that time, but I saw it. Like, it caught my eye, and I was like, dude, someone could skate this so thing. So you smithed it in the last few years? Yeah, I've, 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 I've skated that thing pretty frequently. Like, what even just have you done on that thing? I've just, I, I've, I caught, like, a front board on it, like, a couple years ago, and then I've lip slid it and smithed really? it and 50 50 it. The, the front board, you have to, like, don't you have to gap out as mm-hmm. a thing? Yeah. I mean, that rail, like, no one's ever skated that thing ever before. I think some, some other kid hit it when, uh, I think Moose took Ty Evans or some group there, and some other kid smithed it, too. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's the go-to for that thing. Yeah, it's a good rail for But that. you can't skate the other side? No, they, they, they built, like, all this crazy shit there now. Like, okay. you, there's, like, a fence on that side now, so you can't skate over it anymore. And they put, like, a gate up top, and they locked it, so you can't skate the rail. You can't skate it at all anymore. Not really. So you have to, like, cut the gate open. Okay. Because that thing is equivalent to almost, like, Hollywood 16, or... Yeah, I think that thing's scarier than Hollywood, for sure. It is? it's, like, so steep. And then there's, like, a brick 
yeah thing that sticks out on it. Yeah, Hollywood's just perfect. So how does that, like going to Barley Grind Hollywood, you're like, okay, I'm driving my car today. I'm going, I'm driving from Camrio. I'm going to go Barley Grind. <laughs> Barley Grind, Hollywood 16 by 2 o'clock, call the photographer. Is that what it's like? Or, like, no. how does that go down? No, I just, like, you know, I, I had been, like, surfing a lot. Okay. A lot more than skateboarding. And, like, I don't know, one day I just, like, was watching some of my old footage or some shit like that. And I just was like, dude, I could fucking, like, I mean, I have, like, a good Barley Grind. I should go do it on something that I really want to do it on before I'm, like, too old, you know? Yeah. And um, I just remember, like, being like, dude, what the fuck? Like, why am I surfing every day? I should just go <laughs> skate, you know? And, um... I I started skating a lot, and then I was like, dude, I want to do it. Like, I think I can totally do it. And then one day, I just, we all went out to LA, and I was like, dude, I'm just going to do it. And, like, Did I you already... Did board slide it first or anything? Yeah, I board slid it, and board slid it to faking, and then 50 50 it, and then I tried the barley grind. Front side? Mm-hmm. And then you just did it in, like, three tries or something? No, it took me, like, five or six tries. To okay. Do. And then, what is it like jumping onto something so big? It's a gnarly rush. And you and you made it to the bottom every time? You just jump and roll out? Or? Yeah, there was a couple times where it was, like, kind of sketchy. Like, I would get into board side sometimes and, like, come down the rail all weird. And, like, it was, like... Like, backwards? Yeah. Kind of? mm-hmm. And then there was one where, like, I grinded down the whole rail and, like, my front foot went over my tail. And I, like, swear in the footage, it almost looks like I broke my ankle. But, but it was okay? Yeah, it was fine. You, ro- you didn't roll it? Mm-hmm. I got really lucky. And then after that, I think it was like two tries later, and I did it. And you're just like, boom. Yeah. That's, I, don't, I think that's the biggest barley grind I've ever done. No, there's some other kid that, you know what? It's funny because me and this other kid barley grinded the 16 at the same time. Really? Like yeah. Like a week of each other? Yeah, we didn't even know. You know what? He might have done it before, way before me. I don't know. I had never even like Saw heard of him or yeah. seen it or anything. And then um, mine got thrown up on like thrasher's instagram or some shit and like everyone was like oh this kid did it first and or whatever and i was like ah whatever you know <laughs> like, who cares so t- yeah maybe. but um do you think you could have done it on el toro maybe maybe the middle rail but like the side one that they have there that just everyone the it's top. like no it's just like the left one for me is like since i'm regular it's like it extends out past the stairs it's a little longer. Okay. And it's, like, kind of scary. Have I you skated that rail? I've never skated El Toro. Did you been there? hmm I've been there plenty of times. I just... Every time I went there, we were either, like, super tired and sore or, like, the rail was knobbed. But you could skate that thing for sure. I think I could. Just for fun? Yeah, I think Just I to could. do it, like, yeah. say, like, yeah, I've grinded it. Yeah, I wanted to do that, actually, but, like, we just never... We never got around to doing it. And you think you could have barley grinded it if it was still there? Maybe the middle rail. Maybe if I was, like, really feeling it. Do you drink caffeine? Yeah. Okay. I drink a lot of coffee. So, so you drink caf- a lot of coffee. You don't smoke mm-hmm. cigarettes? Mm-mm. Okay, that's awesome. So that's that's your fucking... Yeah. Your rush is, is big rails and caffeine. Yeah. And big waves now. I like... Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I mean, dude, it's kind of fun, but it's, it really is not that... Big wave surfing is fun, but it hurts, and it's really, really nerve-wracking, and it... I only can get like one that day and I'm happy and then I don't need any more. Yeah. It's, I don't know, surfing big waves like that, like is pretty scary. There's, there was like a time where I went to San Francisco with like my buddy Tyler and Jesse and dude, we surfed ocean beach and it was like way beyond my skill level. Way beyond. But that's when you first started, right? Yeah. I was surfing for like maybe two or three, I was surfing for like three years before that. So we started surfing around the same time. Pretty much. yeah. Yeah. And there was a couple days where I surfed at, like, Oxnard Shores and, like, Hollywood Beach. And, like, it was, like, big. And, like, I kind of got, like, a taste of that. And then we went to Ocean Beach. And I was like, oh, I think I could maybe do that. But it was honestly way beyond my skill set. It's something else. It's, um, so this is actually the, first, the actually the best person to ask this question. Because mm-hmm. this is the age-old question. Mm-hmm. And you're the, actually the best person to ask. What's gnarlier? Like, barley grinding? Hollywood 16? Or... I honestly, or surfing, like trying to get a barrel at Ocean Beach when it's 12 to 15 foot. I think surfing is gnarlier. It's gnarlier, right? Yeah. It is for sure. Because every, every skater needs to know that surfing is gnarlier. It really is. It is because like you have no control over what's happening. For the most part, like everything stays the same skateboarding. You mm-hmm. can like gain a control of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But it's like when you're in the ocean, you have no control. You're at the mercy. Yeah, you're at the mercy of the ocean. And how big was Ocean Beach that day? Uh, the first day we surfed it, probably like me, like 10, like 
maybe 10 to 15 foot maybe there was like oh a couple 15 foot sets and then the next day we surfed it it was like like 15 to like 20 feet and you actually made it out past the shore break i made it out past the shore break and i was out there and i caught one wave and it wasn't like a bomb it was like a like a, a regular wave and like i caught it right in front of my friend jesse and then um i kind of sat out there for a long time and it started getting like really big and i was like dude what am i doing out here and you just were going over the big swells just yeah. like sitting there like this is just it's intense yeah it's intense i've had a couple times like that i'm like what am i doing out here i'm like riding like a five seven and yeah it's like 12 foot i was on an 8 okay that's yeah. huge yeah it was gnarly and you can't even duck dive a board like that no you have to just ditch your board you just ditch it and hope your leash doesn't break yeah and you just like swim as low as you can mm-hmm I like, I don't know, the, the type of surfing I really like to do is, like, I like surfing, like, hollow, like, fast beach breaks that aren't, like, massive, you know? If it's, like... So, like, know. Strand or Oxnard when it's, like, four to six foot? Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. Like, offshore, and, like, it's perfect. It's fun. There's so many... In the winter, it's, there's so many waves after, after each other. It's so hard to paddle out over there. Yeah. Oh, my God. Sometimes it's, like, 27 waves in a row or something. I yeah. counted one time. Oxnard Shores reminds me of like a mini ocean beach a little bit because it has like that, that inside shore break and then it has like the outside sets and then you can get cleaned up by like the bigger ones. So you like surfing over there a lot? Yeah, I like surfing over there. It's fun. I mean, it's closer to your house. Yeah, it's easier. It's not good like a lot of the time, but it's it's easy and you know, like I get like a, I get like comfortable surfing one area because I get kind of the feel for it. So yeah. I just like to keep going there. So do you, you don't really care to go to, like, Malibu or, like, County Line or Rincon that much? Nah, because, I, I don't know, dude, the crowds are crazy over there, and, like, I'm not really, like, super competitive, and I don't want to, like, compete for waves with people. So you're not paddle battling everyone? Nah, dude. I like to just surf by myself a lot. You surf alone? I do, yeah. Okay. I surf alone a lot, too, but I like to surf with all my friends at... Well, don't, yeah, don't get me wrong. I like to surf with my friends a lot too, but like if I had to like pick between like surfing Malibu with like 50 dudes or like go surf like a shitty shore break wave in Oxnard, I'll probably go surf by myself in Oxnard. I would do the same thing. I mean, Malibu at first and first point and stuff is like a city yeah. and I don't like the parking is really hard and I don't really ride a longboard and it's just too much of like a city and I like the aspect of surfing of just being in nature and stuff yeah and i like north malibu like i don't really go surf mal like you surf um you surf like staircase a lot yeah i'll surf staircase and zeros yeah. a lot mm-hmm. um i don't know if i should be talking about that but um no well, i mean i just okay, i just whatever. named it off the there, so <laughs> it's okay i'd probably get my i think about it these days you can just None of that stuff matters anymore. It doesn't. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the, the whole localism thing with surfing and taking pictures and thing is done yeah. because of Instagram and social media. Like every spot's blown out, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. It's a, when did that happen? You think that's just because of social media? Yeah, I, I believe every, like since everyone has phones now, it's like, you know, something happens, someone's going to film it, someone's going to get in trouble. And there's no, like, everyone has, is taking pictures of the spot. Yeah. Everyone. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, even the Cholo dude taking a picture of the spot. (laughs) (laughs) So you uh, surfed in North Sumatra? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went to Indonesia like three months ago. With uh, like a whole bunch of your like crew? or Mm -hmm. A bunch of the dudes from like Revolution, that board shop in Camarillo. Okay. And then um, a couple of my friends like Kevin Denning. Nice. He went and then, um, yeah, just all the boys from Camarillo and... We, uh, yeah. That was your first trip to Indonesia? Yeah, it was pretty insane. Have you ever been out of the States before that? No. So this was your, that was your first trip out of America? Kind of. Well, no, I mean, I've, I've been to, like, mainland Mexico, but that's okay. only, like, that's only, like, a, that's, like, a four-hour flight. Right, but I mean, like, off the continent. Yeah, no, oh, like, cool. we were, that's, that was my first trip awesome. ever, like, to go off and the continent, yeah. What was the experience? It, dude, it was awesome. I mean, the flight and, like, the traveling was gnarly. It was, like, two days straight of traveling. Two but, days? Two days straight. You were just on the plane for, like, 20 hours. Yeah, you, fl- you fly from LAX to Japan, mm-hmm. and then from Japan okay. to, uh, I think it's Jakarta, yeah, and then from Jakarta to Padang, and then from Padang to Nios, and then you get on a boat for, like, eight hours. So you didn't... You guys were wanted to go far out. You didn't care to surf like Uluwatu or any of those no, places. No, yeah, we 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 motored around to like a lot of spots that were 
really like undisclosed. So you had a, it was a boat trip mm-hmm. with like 10 of the best, all your best friends and all that stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And your really wife good. was pregnant at home. Yeah. And she let me go. This is, you're like, this is like my last. Yeah. This was like my last big thing that I could do before our baby was here. Wow. So what a great trip. Yeah. It was fun. And you surfed every single day. Mm-hmm. Or it was good every day. It was insanely good every day. The wave quality out there is insane. So this is in Neos? It's in, uh, it's, it's, uh, the Telos. That's the Tel- a Telo Islands? The Telo Islands, yeah. They're very, like, uh, it's, like, very uninhabited over there. So there's no one around? Not really, no. And you're on, like, a big yacht kind of mm-hmm. boat? Like mm-hmm. a 26 foot? or Yeah. Okay. It's pretty rad. It's and just, like, all raw jungle and... And you sleep on the boat on mm-hmm. the trip? Yeah. And there's a filmer and a photographer? Yeah. So rad. Wow. So fun. Wow. I mean, because most of the time, like... No one gets to see your wave, you know? Yeah. So to get, like, a picture of you on one good wave is enough for the whole trip? Yeah, but then you got, like, I don't know, you're surfing so many good waves, and, like, they're always taking photos, so you're, like, you're just constantly... You don't even care. Yeah, you're just, like, constantly getting good shots, and you're like, oh, dude, this is rad. It's fun. Oh, my goodness. Did you ever hit the reef? Yeah. And you got jacked? Uh, I never, like, really, like hit it too bad i grazed my leg on it pretty bad and i think i hit some fire coral or something and my leg like discolored and like got really red and like really swollen and, the yeah. whole leg was discolored. just like the calf okay. area mm-hmm. and you're just trunking it the whole time and yeah wow and do you so when you're like surfing and you're paddling the wave do you you see the reef and you're mm-hmm. what's you can, it like what's that like uh, it's like, it, depending on the wave you're surfing, like if it's like a really hollow fast wave, it's like kind of nerve wracking. Cause you're like, Oh shit. Like if I mess up the drop, I'm going to hit this. There's just a rock right there. Right? Yeah. It's like sharp razor stuff. sharp. Yeah. So that's way gnarlier than grinding a tensor rail. Yeah. I think so. Cause it's like, well, you get, you get the hang of it after a while, you know, you get used to the waves out there and stuff and it becomes easier. Like the waves are definitely easier to surf out there than our waves here. No. Really? Cause yeah. they push you into them. Easier. Yeah. And it's just, they're so perfect. There's... So it's like compared to skating, like a shitty skate park to a really good quarter pipe. It's like, I'll put it this way. Imagine like skating Washington street okay. every day. And yeah. then you go skate fucking like that new, like Carlsbad park that they just built. That's something that's perfectly... Perfectly aligned and everything is like... And nothing's immaculate. tight. Like... Nothing's tight. No. Okay, nothing's tight. Yeah. It's all open and spread. Yeah. And like the easy... The turns that look easy because the canvas is wide open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's... Our waves aren't really like that. No, I feel like our waves, we just race closeouts. We just race closeouts. Huh? Yeah, at the beach breaks, yeah. Okay. And yeah. strand and shores and stuff. That's what we're doing. We're just racing closeouts. But then you can also get a little barrel sometimes. You can also score, though. I mean, like, we, like when, you know, when you get, like, a good combo swallow, like, good wind, and, you know, everything comes together, but it just doesn't happen a lot. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's a, like, exactly what Jay Adams says. He's like, skateboarding, the quarter pipe's always there, but when the elements come together, there's nothing better than getting a tube. Yeah, that's true. And it is... It's something like yeah. skaters don't understand. It's something that I feel you, like I feel like a lot more skaters are starting to surf nowadays, and they're like understanding more, and it's becoming more of like an accepted thing to do both. Why was it so unaccepted growing up? It was so weird. I don't know. I, I never really heard of like skaters surfing when I was younger. No one did. Yeah. It wasn't a thing. Like when I, because I grew, I worked at Val Surf. Maybe it was because of all like the localism type stuff, and they were scared. Maybe. Or intimidated. It was more intimidating back then. Yeah. In the, like, early 2000s. And now like it's kind of like, I hate to say it, but it's, like, becoming, like, a, a soccer mom sport, you it, know? Dude, it's yeah. so mainstream. Like, the girl yeah. brings her whole friends and their whole family surfing together. Yeah. I mean, at least it, everyone's happy and stuff, but it's... It's not as raw, I think. It's not they, raw, yeah. no. Mm-mm. I mean, there's some places that are, but most of the places in Malibu is just, like... Everyone and their grandma. Yeah. I mean, at least they're, everyone's having a good time. Right? Yeah. That's, That's what, what it's all about. about. Yeah. I mean, I didn't start surfing until I was 27. Yeah. How old were you? Uh, I started in 2015, so... Same. Let me see. Probably like, I think like 24. Okay. And how long did it even take for you to figure it out? Oh, dude. Like, it was... Like, I thought I could figure it out fast, and it took me, like, 
I hear some people that are like, oh yeah, dude, I stood up my first day. And I'm like, dude, it took me like three days to stand up. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't like catch waves because I like had no like upper body strength. Right? That's yeah. uh, the first time I went out. I'm like, how do I do this? Yeah. I mean, after doing yoga and stuff, I, I was strong. But when I first tried to surf in Hawaii when I was like a teenager or something, I'm like, how? Yeah. Like I couldn't do it. Yeah. The paddling is not there and like your, your core strength's not there. It's like... Do you feel like you've become a more confident overall like skater from surfing and stuff from being like stronger in your upper body? I feel like I feel like surfing's helped my style a lot with skateboarding and it's made me like it's made me a lot more like flowy with my skateboard. Do you feel like you can like charge more? Yeah, I feel like I uh, you know like you know using that mindset to where like you're just like you know it's just like just fucking go. Right. The next wave just fucking go no right. matter what happens. That's kind of like the same deal with skateboarding. You just have to be like just go. And, and then there's no pussyfooting no. in surfing. Mm -mm. None. You have to just go. Or if you do, just get a good crash over the falls or whatever. Yeah, but then, in skateboarding, you can just like roll up to the rail, like, stop. Like, okay, there's try, guys. Wait, there's try. And like, okay, stop. Do that for like an hour. Yeah, you could do that for an hour. But you can't do that in surfing. You can't. Or, or you could just sit there and get crushed. Yeah. <laughs> that's all that's going to happen. Yeah. So that's, that's the major like training of surfing is just like, just fucking go. Just go. Yeah. Yeah. And that helps a lot in in other aspects of life and in even my business and yoga or makes you just everything. I feel like a more confident person to do things in like your everyday daily life. For sure. Yeah. It just makes you it gives you some type of power or something. Mm -hmm. That's really addicting. It is really addicting. It's so addicting. Because I still I mean I still surf every day. Every day? Yeah. I try to. Every when morning. I, when I have time, yeah. Hey, what time do you have to be at, at work? I usually don't work till two in the afternoon. Oh, okay. So like yeah. two to eight? Two to ten. Two to ten. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can surf and skate, get that out of your system and yeah, go to work? Yeah, but you know, um, before before we had the baby, uh, yeah, I was I could surf for like two hours in the morning and then I would go to the skate park right afterwards. And just I would keep that going. I kept that going for like like four or five years now. Wow. Yeah. That's a and your your legs are feel so weird after if you try to do both on the same day. Yeah, it. It's, you know what? I got used to it though. Okay. Because I can I can surf in the morning now and then skate afterwards and my body feels totally fine. I feel like I found like a good balance between it. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Like when you first like surf in the morning and then you get on your skateboard, you feel all like jello legged. It's a really weird feeling. Yeah. Because your legs get so beat. Yeah. Oh my goodness! You wouldn't realize, but no, yeah. yeah, like what we're just going down the line, but it's just something with about pushing against the wave. I think. That yeah, that, I think just you know, surfing is just like an like full body, full body workout. Everything you're working at, everything. Everything. Oh yeah. God, my freaking neck. Yeah. <laughs> do you? So you don't do any other type of exercise? Um, I like to ride my bike a lot. So you just straight. No, I like to climb hills with my bike. Okay. I like go up like some hills in Camarillo, and I've 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 done uh, a couple rides from like my house in Camarillo to Newberry Park, and I've ridden up Potrero a couple times. Well, that's and really then gnarly. I've done yeah, I've done like Balcom Canyon and stuff. Just a, like a mountain bike or a road bike? Road bike. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you ride your bike to work and stuff? Like I that? used to. So I, my bike got stolen like last year. Oh, okay. So you haven't been doing it. Not not lately. You need a new bike. Yeah, but they're expensive. Dude. I'm scared to ride a bike on the street. Yeah, it's kind of scary because people drive like super crazy. Now? Yeah. I mean, now it's like too crazy to ride a bike. I don't know. Yeah. I've fallen really hard mountain biking and I, I don't really want to do it anymore. Oh, yeah. Mountain biking trips me out though because the trails are like so rugged and it's like so narrow and it's like I'd rather just ride on the road. Right? Yeah. So you were, how do you, what's your method for like filming a park? I don't know. You know, I used to kind of like get a little like crazy over it. Like I used to be like, oh, I got to go fucking film today. Like I got to go do this. I got to go fucking do this. And it wasn't like because like I felt like I was obligated to do it for someone else. I just like. For yourself, right? In the back of my head, I was like, dude, if you don't do it today, you might never, never do it. You know what I mean? So you had that feeling too. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about this feeling. Yeah. <sighs> Mine's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my feeling well, that's of, a, that's of skateboarding a... is of having to film skateboarding tricks is gone. That's well. That's good. You know, it is good. You're, that's like a. That's like you're growing in a, in a good way. You know. But um, but it's also it was such a fun thing. It is like, such a to fun like thing. Check it off the list or like go there and do it and go home and be like, 
I did it. Did yeah. what I wanted to do. But then you like start thinking about it. And you're like, fuck, dude. When am I gonna like be like accomplished? And it's like we're never accomplished. You just want more and more and more. And then if you don't like cut yourself off, you're like, I don't know. That's just the way I am. So you always had this mentality. Like, did you always want to be a sponsor, like pro skater? Uh, no, not really. I kind of want to, you know, when I was younger, I wanted to be sponsored just to like get boards because I didn't have like a lot of money growing up. Okay. And, um, my mom, she would buy me skateboards as much as she could, you know, but we weren't like, my mom was a single parent raising two kids. So it was pretty hard. Okay. Um, but, uh, I honestly just wanted skateboards so I could just have skateboards to keep skateboarding. Right. I mean, it's expensive. But I never really wanted to be like a big pro skateboarder or like get paid a shit ton of money to go do it i really what i wanted out of like skateboarding is like traveling and fucking like good times really and hanging out with the friends yeah and being a part of something bigger than yourself yeah and being socially accepted for skateboarding did you ever mm-hmm. feel that way no you didn't care no You've always been, like, a part of the underground scene, like, a lot. You really like low card. And <laughs> yeah, I do like low card. Those guys just have my back, so I have their back. They're cool. Yeah, they're cool. I've been in a couple issues. Yeah, that's right. Long, long time that's ago. That's right. Yeah, been in a couple <laughs> issues. I like San Francisco a lot. Yeah. So you never, like, cared? No, I didn't give a shit what people thought. Oh. I still don't. It doesn't awesome. matter. Yeah, no, yeah. Fuck, fuck it. Yeah. Yeah, and if anyone doesn't like it, who fucking cares? I've done my own thing, like, for a long time. Right, and you're kind of off the grid in Camarillo. Yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, even though you are close to LA, do you skate LA that much? Not anymore. I used to a lot, though. When you were younger. Yeah, when I was like. I mean, I still like skating handrails now, but I felt like I was like really frothing for handrails like all the time, and that's like where they were, and I just wanted to go skate out there all the time. Did you feel like growing up in Camarillo, you're like, oh, I need to get to freaking LA, I need to get there and skate? Yeah. Dude, I was in the same boat. Yeah. But you don't feel that way that much. No, I like skating spots at home now. I like... Original spots. mm -hmm, I like skating. I like finding new stuff around our local area, like Ventura or Camarillo or Thousand Oaks, Newberry Park. There's so much stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, you you find something new like that and you do something on it that you're stoked on, you know, it's just, like, that much more of a good feeling because you're not competing with, like, ten other dudes. Right, because Jamie Foy hasn't been there yet. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Have you ever friend for the handrail? Hell no. Dude, I don't understand that. Neither trip. do I. I've done it I've done it on ledges. But I've done like, it a couple times on a ledge, but it's like a balanced. Yeah. It's like yeah. crappy. Gosh. When I was like uh when I was like sixteen I front crooked that little blue box in Malibu. Oh okay. at the post office. But yeah. it was like one of those front crooks that you were talking about, like kinda like, balanced. Yeah. I drive crazy. by that thing for work all the time. Still skatable, huh? I think it's still it's still there. Yeah, yeah I don't think right. anyone skates it that much anymore. Yeah, it's yeah, it's crazy how that spot's just right there in Malibu, and the skaters go drive so far to go skate the blue box, but then they could go to like County Line or Zuma or wherever and have the best time. But yeah. they don't even know. Yeah, they don't even know. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even seeing it. It's like when you were a skater, you're so like you're so locked in, you're boxed like, this in, yeah, thing. That only, like, a few, no, a lot of people do it, but, a, like, it's a small world. Yeah. And there's such a big world outside of that. Like, my world it consists of yoga and surfing and the art world and now fashion and design. That's awesome. So that I have, like, all these outlets to, yeah. like, play with or meet new people. But I feel like a lot of skaters, they're just so locked in to, like, only hanging out with their skater friends. Having, like, one mindset. Yeah, and only hanging out with, like, one group of dudes yeah it's a weird thing i'm like you guys need to open your minds yeah a little bit i don't know yeah. you seem like you're more mature in your skating i don't know i just i just i just have fun skating and you're just a grown-ass man i guess i don't know <laughs> i still feel like i'm a little kid though don't you yeah forever right yeah how old are you now turning 28 next month 28 yeah nice happy birthday thanks dude <laughs> and you've been a pro for ATM for like five years? Mm-hmm. And what's that like? It's pretty cool. I mean, I, I get like a little bit of royalties from them. Oh, you get From my board sales. You which, do. Which is pretty cool. But um, I don't make like anything from right. it. I don't really like care to. I just do it. You get the I boards. Like, yeah, I like to do it. And, you know, even if I didn't have a board for them one day, it's like that wouldn't change anything with me. And how did that even happen? How did you get sponsored by them? Dude, I just was like... Like, like I said, I just didn't have a lot of money when I was younger, and I was, like, 
19 and I told myself, I was like, all right, dude, like if I don't get like hooked up by somebody by like 23, then I'm out. Like I need to go get a real job, go to school, like just figure something out. And like, the I, dilemma we all have. Yeah. And then I just started hitting up all these dudes and like trying to get boards from people. And you know, a lot of people, I guess like liked my skating, but like they weren't really like down for it. You know, who else did you like try to get sponsored by? I tried to get sponsored by a lot of people, dude. Like my machines. Yeah. Zero. A lot, a lot of people. I could see you on like zero. Yeah, I don't know about it anymore. I don't like skate. I, I like skating big handrails, but I like skating a lot of other stuff now, too. You do, like, inverts and stuff. <laughs> I like skating tranny. How the heck do you in- learn how to invert? I don't know. I just started throwing them one day at a, on a ramp. Just, just throwing them. Because like, I can do handstands and crazy handstand stuff, but I don't understand the invert. It's hard. That's a hard one to figure out. But I like, I, I don't know, I just started throwing them around on a little ramp and like throwing my board up, you know? And just catching the coping? And just no, I never, I, I would always put my hand down in the middle of the ramp. So you would do like an early grab thing? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I started learning how to grab the coping and like actually like grab later. Late. So you go up, grab the coping, and you grab the board late, mm-hmm. and then you just go back down. Mm-hmm. Go straight. Try to go straight up and back down. So it's like doing it like a backside air. Kind of, yeah. With your hand on the coping. Yeah. That's, so that's all it is. Pretty much, yeah. But well, do you ever like catch like disaster and eat shit? No, I've never hung up on one. You fall like further down. Yeah, you make it further down because usually when you're doing an invert on something, you're doing it on something vertical. Like that's why they call it an invert, I guess. I don't invert. Know. Yeah. Okay. So you want to do it on something that's like straight up, so that easier. way you won't catch coming back down. The problem I have doing them is committing to the coming down part. Like I was just always scared that I was gonna like come back down and lean too far forward and just get pile drived into the ground. Have you ever done it to fakie? I tried a couple, but I never landed one. Have you ever done front side? No way. I don't even get that. I don't even get that either. Like Lance Mountain, right? Like, yeah, so crazy. And his legs like, Jack. can you do them on the street? No. On a parking block? You no. You can't do it on like a parking block? No way. Like my V? No, nah, the smallest thing I've done it on is like, uh, I don't even know, like that Hidden Valley vert ramp. Okay. The thing's like seven or eight feet. Dude, you gotta get like a street invert. Like that, somehow, dude, like, there's this dude that rides for Zero that yeah. actually, he's like actually Zero's filmer, and I think they hook him up with boards too, but he, dude, he can invert like ditch spots. Yeah. Like parking blocks on ditches. I want to see that. Like something really street, like something different. I want to see it invert like on a weird street spot. Yeah. I saw you cab flip that thing in, in Oxnard. Oh, yeah. I was looking at that because I've always wanted to, I wanted to skate that spot. Mm-hmm. What, was it hard to like pop off the brick thing? No, that spot's not that bad. They kind of they kind of changed it though because like it used to be flush with the sidewalk when you would roll up it. Okay. But they redid the sidewalk kind of so now it like the cr- like the crack from the brick sticks out. So there's only like this certain section you can ride up it now. So they kind of messed. So it. it's not it's changed since you did it. No, it was they, it's changed since like I remember it, but that, I did it like that. Oh, you did it when it was harder. Yeah. I'm surprised no one ever skated that thing. That's fun. It's such a dude. Um, Aaron Lorith did some cool stuff on it in did that he? in that nine one seven video. The new one? Not the new one. It I was need to watch one. the new one. The new one's sick. Even though I don't skateboard at all, I don't ha- even have a skateboard. I, I like watching it. Oh well, yeah, dude, you were a, like an amateur pro skateboarder. I was am. Yeah. But uh, you know, skateboarding is um, it's just too hard on my body. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I even feel it now that I'm getting older. It's hard. It's harder to keep up with that like progression you once were doing. Like you know, I stopped skating when I was 23. I haven't skated in like almost nine or ten years. I yeah. skated a little bit uh, recently. Um, I learned how to dark slide. That's sick. yeah. Nolly heel lip dark slide pop out. Kick flip dark slide pop out. Nolly backside flip dark slide you were always you were always like super talented with whatever you did thank you it was pretty rad to watch that i noticed that because you picked up surfing really fast and you like you you rip thanks man surfing well dude the board doesn't flip i know it doesn't you don't have to grind you don't have to lock into anything it doesn't kick flip some people can but it's it's stupid it's stupid the whole best part about surfing is just like Front side snap, back side snap, mm. back side barrel, turn, back side yeah, barrel, front side barrel, grab rail, grab rail front side, 
hit the lip, uh, floater, and then you're, you're done. Yeah. There's nothing like crazy you have to learn. It's There's like five movements, Yeah. and that's it. Yeah. And it's rad, be, it's rad just getting in tune with the ocean, too. Yeah. Such a good feeling. And you don't have to go switch. No. Nope. That's what's awesome. And there's girls, and, there's, and they're in bikinis, <laughs> and they, they snap backside, and their ass is in your face, and the water sprays. Like, that's a real thing. I know. Like, in skateboarding, there's, like, a girl with, like, a shaved head and shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's gnarly. <laughs> yeah. They're still good. There's a lot of girl skaters nowadays, though. Is it? Like, I... There was nothing like that when I was growing up. There's a lot of girl skaters now, and they're not even, like, they're not even gnarly looking. They're just, like... Regular girls. Yeah, they look like hipster chicks that skate. Do you see them at spots and stuff? I see them at skate parks, yeah. And they're good? Yeah. Dude, they rip. It's kind of rad. So it's, like, it's a different experience now at the skate park than 10 years ago. Yeah, for sure. It's it's more open? Yeah, you know what? It's, like... Me growing up at, like, Camarillo Skate Park, we kind of were, like, we had, like, a little localized thing there, too. With Robbie. And yeah. I, it was cool. And dude, before they locked it up, like, in 2007 or six, it was cool. Yeah. It was, like, the spot to hang out. Yeah. It was, it, was the, it was the only park, really, around here that had tranny besides, like, Skate Street and, like, Skate Lab. And they were, cost money. Yeah. And were indoors. Yeah. And... I think Santa Santa Paula was built after Camarillo. Yeah, but that's like off grid, like yeah. not off the one hundred and one. You know. Yeah. Like, I mean, I would go there. You know, I kicked the board slow down the rail there. Did you? You know, first try once. That's sick. when I was like twelve. That's rad. In Mark Johnson Americas. That's how long ago it was. Really? Yeah. Gosh, did you ever like go out of the bowl onto the rail? I've tried a couple times. It's just weird. That rail is so f- way too fat. Yeah, I like it though. It's fun. I can feeble grind it up at once. Really? Do you ever grind up the whole thing? Mm-hmm. All the time? Yeah, it's pretty fun. So is it that park's open again? Now? Yeah, it's open. It's free. And no pads? Or no pads. No one's no, watching? No, no pad nannies, nothing. So what happened? It was closed for like five years. Yeah, it was closed because a lot of the dudes that were hanging out there were like shooting up and like there was a lot of fights there all the time. People were like constantly fucking like lighting shit on fire at the skate park like i was probably i was one of those kids that did that yeah yeah it was just a lot of fights a lot of drugs and like the city was just sick of it because it was like a pretty bad scene for a little while it was so there's a lot of like heroin epidemic yeah yeah in camarillo yeah dude the first time i ever seen anyone with heroin was at camarillo skate park i remember seeing uh this one dude who used to skate there who was really good, and like I just remember seeing him sitting behind the Boys and Girls Club just cooking this spoon with this liquid in it, and I was like, what the fuck is that? And my buddy was like, oh, dude, they're cooking heroin. And I was like, oh, what Just the shoot fuck? it up? Yeah, they would just shoot it up right there at the Boys and Girls Club and then fucking nod out on the wall. For, it was gnarly. Like teenager kids. Yeah, and there was a lot of fights there, like a lot of brutal fights too. Like, like ro- death-defying fights? Yeah, like Robbie fucked someone up really bad. Really? Yeah, one time. Gosh, I never thought of him as being that violent. And he just... there. This dude just came into the skate park that was all drunk and, like, talking shit to everyone, and Robbie told him to get the fuck out of there, and he didn't want to leave, and he tried to, like, square up with Robbie, and Robbie just fucking... Robbie was the enforcer. Robbie truck-bashed him in the back of the head, and the Are dude just serious? fucking dropped, yeah. Oh, my God. There's a lot of... There's a lot of gnarly shit that happened there. Oh, my goodness. There was always, like, fights at the handball courts, too, with all the cholos. You know, like, my parents would drop me off there when I was, like, a preteen... And my dad would be like, don't leave. Like, I'd be like, why? Like, let me go to, I need to go to Taco Bell or something. Like, yeah. he's like, no, no, just stay at the skate park. Don't go anywhere, okay? Like, we'll be back in a couple hours. Pick you up. Like, I didn't realize what was going on. Like, yeah. At all. But I feel like, I feel like in that zone, in that park, was worse than, like, you going to skate to Taco Bell. You think so? Yeah. They didn't know, though. They didn't know that. Yeah, they didn't know. But Camarillo is such a safe city, but, dude, for some reason, that park just brought in, like, bad news. I mean, skateboarding is just this... It's a melting pot of weirdos. Yeah. But it's not even the... The good skateboarders don't even care about the drugs. No. It's the shitty skateboarders who want to be a part of the scene who do the drugs. Who hang out at the skate park. Who are, like, punk, but they don't, like skate or do anything Mm -hmm. so they like go to drugs because they're bored yeah and it's really sad straight up if they just like put some more time in their skateboard or like got in at least they got into graffiti or something productive yeah at least they do graffiti and they make art 
Right. Rather than just fucking do heroin and nod out on the wall. Yeah. That's I'd rather I mean. have them fucking spray paint my fucking front door than have them fucking do heroin. Yeah. So, it's just, what do you think, like, do you th- is it still like that over there? No. What, what, is, what changed? I think the park being, dude, it was closed for 10 years. 10, 10 full years? Yeah, 10 full so years. So all those people fucking died. All those people are just gone. They're Did just you not have even... a lot of friends who passed away from drugs and shit? Yeah. A, yeah. A few? Yeah, quite a bit. Quite a bit within the last, like, five years. Like, all of your age? Kind of yeah, the just people that I grew up with. I don't. I didn't necessarily hang out with them anymore, but I knew them for such a long time, and we were such good friends when we were younger. It was like still mind blowing. You're like, whoa! Yeah, all from my shooting up. Uh yeah, some of them from that, and then some of them from like some other shit, like just like raging type shit, just being angry and doing stupid shit. Mm. Yeah, being angry. Yeah. About what? What, if, what was everyone so angry about? I don't know. Well, they need to surf and skate and do some yoga. Yeah. <laughs> Chill out, huh? Right, yeah. Paint a picture. Yeah, seriously. I don't know why everyone's so angry. I mean, I used to be angry growing up, but it's gone. Yeah. I'm not as angry as I used to be. I used to be pissed all the time. Were you? Yeah. And then do you feel like skateboarding like channeled that? Is that why you like would destroy yourself in a way? Like yeah. because you're mad at the world or just mad at like your your family situation or something like that? Yeah, stuff like that for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like family issues and then like just, you know, feeling like skateboarding gave me like a place to belong. You it know? totally gave every yeah. kid a place to belong. Yeah. Which is which was really rad. And then there's people in the community who like don't want you to belong. I know, it's so weird. So What's their fucking true. problem? I don't know, dude. Because <laughs> they don't want you to be better than them. But, like, in reality, we're not better than anyone. No, we're no, all, no. Like... I mean, like, on the skill on the board. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're afraid that they're gonna, you're going to take over their limelight. I know. That, that's weird. So pathetic. Yeah. Happens, like, every, in every type of situation. Yeah. So then, like, so growing up and being, coming from a, having a single mom and now you're a dad, like, how are you going to raise your child? Dude, I just want him to have fun. I want him to experience some cool stuff. I'm not going to, like, force him to do anything. I'm not going to, you know, like, try to force anything down his throat. Just fucking take him to the skate park. And if he wants to skate, skate. If, dude, if he wants to become an actor, he can become an actor. Whatever, dude. I don't care. If he wants to paint, he can paint. I don't give a shit. As long as he's doing something that makes him happy and it makes him feel, like, good about himself, mm-hmm. dude, more power. Like, So you're going to be, be there and be fully supportive. Yeah, dude. That's awesome. No matter what. No matter, honestly, no matter what. I love it. Yeah. Anything else you want to share with, with the world? Um. Oh, shit. Did that thing, that thing's It's okay. Good. We can just, we can. Yeah. It can go technical, divot, go yeah. black. That's cool. <laughs> okay, that's happened like three times now. No, that's cool. It's okay. Um, last thing is. about the voice. Last thing I want to say, yeah. I don't know. All the skater kids. Lo- like. Love yourself. Have fun. Be yourself. Don't try to be something you're not. Be happy. Cool, dude. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, yeah, I want to give you this Nodis Compass Rebel Buddha mug that I made. Sick. It's one of a kind. Let me wash it out before I give it to you. Yeah, dude. No worries. Yeah. It's one of, I only made one of them. Really? Limited edition. That's sick. Dude. Yeah, thanks man. for being on the show. Yeah, thanks, dude. Cool, I'll post it. That's so fun.